Hey everyone, so today's card has been in the back of my mind for weeks now <laughs> and I didn't want to make it and post it because this specific stencil and the Peerless watercolors have been sold out forever. Like places have just been having a really hard time getting them in stock because they're so popular, etc, etc. So I just saw the notification on Facebook that um, Simon Says got these stencils back in stock and then places have been getting the Peerless watercolors back in stock so I'm like, yay, I can make this card. <laughs> So I'm just using some um, Tim Holtz Distress watercolor uh, cardstock and I flipped it over so the smooth side is facing me and then I just taped it down to my little Epicurean cutting board which I have shown in previous videos and I always link to it in the supplies. Um, I didn't completely tape it, I just wanted to hold it in place more than anything and then I taped the stencil down over it again just to kind of hold it in place, it didn't need to be like perfectly taped down or anything just because I wanted to watercolor over it. So I chose the larger feather in this stencil and I um, wet the area of the cardstock first just with clean water and then I'm just picking up my peerless watercolors as you can see and applying it over um, the stencil area. So really really easy. Um, my watercolors here I'm using just from the basics um, set, the complete set which again I'll link to. Um, I've done a previous video showing how I've organized my Pierce watercolors onto these little like palettes basically. Um, if I remember when I'm done uploading this I will link to that in case you missed it. And yeah really really simple just picking up the colors, um, letting them be pretty saturated and then I would re-wet the brush to kind of like blend the colors into each other. Um, that's one of the nice things too I like about the Peerless is they're pretty easy to blend and um, go on really smooth. So I was just kind of playing around and letting the colors kind of blend into each other. So really, really simple. Um, obviously it's not going to be perfect because some of the color is going to kind of ooze out underneath the stencil, which is totally fine. Um, I'm not really good at like freehand, or I'm not comfortable with freehand, you know, drawing something and then trying to watercolor it in. So I like the guide of the stencil. <laughs> so, and as always, I'm very impatient. So I use my heat tool to dry it quickly. And then for the sentiment, I am using my More Scripted Sentiments set and I inked up the friend with Hero Arts Black Ink and then I'm just using a stamp positioner so I get it stamped straight on this piece of cardstock and stamp that one and then I was going to stamp the little companion stamp above it with the black ink and then thought, oh, I'm going to mix it up a little bit and give it a little more definition. So I just grabbed a scrap of black cardstock and then used my anti-static powder tool on it so that I don't get a bunch of um, embossing powder stuck to it. And then inked up my stamp with some pigment ink. So this is MFT Sweet Tooth ink. And then again use my positioner. For this you wouldn't really need to. You could just stamp it and then trim it out with scissors. But my OCD kind of prevented that. So I stamped it with this, uh, the positioner so I got it straight. And then that way I could just use my paper trimmer to trim it out. So I've got this perfect little rectangle here. And I'm going to adhere that to the little card front with um, foam tape in a minute. Um, but what I didn't like, I would used such dark purple along the bottom of the feather that I felt that the F in friend was just kind of, like it was hard to see and it was just bothering me. So I took my white Sharpie poster paint and just added some basically highlights to the lettering. So. So at least though you can see it, which was my big thing. So after adhering the little companion part with the foam tape, like I said, um, I'm grabbing some sequins from my stash and I just picked up some of these little um, the Craftmates lockables. So really loving those for sequin storage. I had them in little mini tiny Ziploc bag type thingies and I was hating it. It was such a pain in the butt to get into. So these little things um, are awesome and I will try to link to those in the supplies as well. I haven't even looked them up online but that's what I will do. Um, I kind of laid them all out how I wanted them to appear since I'm adding quite a few. Usually you know I add little clusters of three and that's about it but this time I decided to add quite a few to this card and I'm using my Ranger Multimedia Matte to adhere them and then my little quick stick tool which has that little bit of stickiness on the end to pick up the sequins. And the one thing with the multimedia mat is it doesn't seem like it's adhering at first. Like trying to get sequins into place is a little bit of a pain just because it's a liquid adhesive. So it just feels like everything's going to pop off. But if you give it a minute and let it set and then fully dry, it holds these things on like nothing. So I was trying not to shift the sequins around too much because it was going over a piece of watercolor. So I didn't want the adhesive to make the watercolor smear or anything. So it was fine though. 
So once I was done and let them dry, which only took a few minutes, um, I flipped it over and then added foam tape to the back of this. And then I'm going to adhere it to my card base, which is some um, Stampin' Up! Elegant Egg Eggplant cardstock, which is still available, surprisingly. I have so much old Stampin' Up! cardstock to use up. Oy. Like, literally, probably three lifetime supplies. <laughs> so, and this one's actually still current. So many of the other colors I have are totally retired. So, anyway, adhere that to the card, which is a standard A2 size card base. So, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I grabbed the more scripted sentiments again to stamp on the inside of the card. So, I stamped the awesome with the Hero Arts Black Ink. And then the second piece, I did the same thing. I um, used my anti-static power to powder tool on the black cardstock. And then I'm going to stamp the stamp with the white pigment ink just along the bottom there. With one this long, I would recommend a stamp positioner just to make it easier for trimming. But yeah, again, you could just trim it out with scissors if, yeah, you don't need to have it perfectly, perfectly straight. You wouldn't even be able to tell. But yeah, pour it over my white embossing powder and I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. And since I did stamp it straight, I can just pull out my paper trimmer again and quickly trim that down. I just love the definition it gave to it. I wasn't even thinking of that when I designed this set. It was more just to stamp them together, but I like this look. It's fun. <laughs> so adhered that over top of the inside sentiment, and then I'm going to adhere this to the inside of my card, and that completely finishes it off. So as always, I will post um, links below to the supplies used right below the video in the description box, as well as a link below to my blog post so you can see all the pictures on there, as well as like picture links to all the supplies. So thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.